Hi guys, today we're going to look at how we can write a script to change the albedo colour of a material. We'll cover how to change the colour of all objects with the same material and how to change individual instances. As always, if you prefer written instructions, you can find a link to the text version in the description. Right, let's get started by creating a new 3D project in Unity Hub. We'll add a cube to the scene by clicking the plus button in the hierarchy and selecting 3D object, cube. Next, we'll create a material. To do this, we'll click on the plus button on the project panel and select material. We'll name this material cube. We'll click on this box next to albedo and choose a green colour. We can now drag the material onto the cube to assign it. Next, we'll add a script to change the colour when the mouse is over the cube. To do this, we'll select the cube in the hierarchy. We'll then click on Add Component and search for the script component. We'll call this script Color Change. We'll double click the script to open it in Visual Studio. To get access to the material and change its color, we need to get the renderer component. We'll create a private field for the renderer. Then we'll get the renderer component in the start method and assign it to the field. We want to change the colour when the mouse is over the cube. Fortunately, Unity has a method called onMouseEnter which is perfect for this. In here, we'll access the material of the renderer and set the colour to red. When the mouse moves off the cube, we want to change the colour back to the original value. To do this, we'll make use of the onMouseExit method. In here, we'll access the material of the renderer and set the colour to green. Let's save the script and switch back to Unity. Before we start the game, we'll click on the camera and set the clear flags value to solid colour. Let's press play to see what happens. When we mouse over the cube it turns red, and when we move the mouse off the cube it changes back to green. Let's stop the game and duplicate the cube by right clicking on the cube in the hierarchy and selecting Duplicate. We'll change the position of the new cube to 2 on the x-axis. Let's press play again. Now when we mouse over the original cube, the new one doesn't change colour even though they share the same material. This is because Unity automatically creates a separate instance of the material when we change any of its values. We can see this happen in the inspector. At the moment the material for the new cube shows like this. When we mouse over the cube it changes to an instance of the material. This is great as it allows us to change the material of each of our objects independently. But what if we wanted to change them all at the same time? We'll have a look at how to do this now. We'll stop the game and select the camera in the hierarchy. We'll click Add Component and add a new script. We'll call the script Material Change. We'll double click to open it in Visual Studio. To change the colour of all objects that share a material, we need to change the actual material rather than an instance. We'll add a public variable to hold the material we want to update. Then in the update method, we'll check if the spacebar has been pressed. If it has, we'll change the colour of the material to red. We'll then check if the spacebar has been released. If it has, we'll set the colour back to green. Let's save the script and switch back to Unity. We'll select the camera in the hierarchy. Then we'll drag the material from the project panel onto the material field of the script. Let's press play to try this out. Now when we press the spacebar, both cubes turn red, and when we release, both return to green. If we now mouse over one of the cubes and then move the mouse away, we get the original behaviour. If we press the spacebar again, you'll notice that only the cube that we didn't mouse over changes colour. This is because the other cube now has its own instance of the material, so isn't affected when we change the original. OK, that covers everything for this tutorial. Hope you found it useful. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks guys!